Good morning, everybody. Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour. Morning, Hope you're all well. Welcome to the uh, next coffee session with Laura, myself, and the rest of the team. Um, just before we start, I think Aris would like to say a few words. Yes, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, second morning coffee. And uh, I want also to welcome uh, our esteemed guests, uh, Elisabetta, James, and uh, Luca. And uh, I don't want to waste your time because yeah, I'm afraid you are very looking forward to for this uh, discussion. So please um, now pass the floor to Nick and Laura. So. Thank you. Off you go, Laura. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining. Yes, now we are all together. Um, and uh, just a few reminders before we start. Uh, we're going to record the session, and you will find the podcast and the video this time uh, on our webpage. So uh, if you're missing something or if someone is not coming, uh, cannot join, they can uh, review the, uh, the session. And um, uh, I want to thank you for joining us in the last session because it was really, really nice to see you all and discuss you about uh, our beloved cruise uh, market. And uh, I have to say that this one uh, just came out naturally from the discussion we had uh, the first time because uh, most so most of us were worried or interested, maybe worried a little bit also about the protocols and the questions were also very, uh, you know, directed in uh, to know the protocols and uh, what's going on with the companies and uh, if we're going to have a common protocol one day, maybe. So um, as we were reading the news lately, we have decided to have today with us two completely different uh, positions and opinions. And so we have invited uh, James Langley, Director of Marine and Technical Operation of Saga Cruises. Good morning, James, and thanks for being here. And Luca Matola and Elisabetta Denardo, uh, respectively, uh, Senior Advisor to CEO of MSX Cruises, the guy who wrote the protocol for MSC. And Elisabetta, you already know, she is Vice President of Port Development for MSC Cruises. Good morning, guys, and thanks for being with us. Uh, Nikki, you want to add something? Yeah, just to let you know that there are two ways uh, when we have uh, finished talking to our esteemed guests, two ways in which you can ask questions. By all means, put use your uh, reactions feature and put up your uh, your hand uh, or just do like this and one of us will be looking. And also we have, a, as you know, a chat uh, format. So please feel free to put your um, your messages on there and please keep them clean, okay? No, uh, just to do with work, please, nothing else this morning. It's uh, it's too early. Uh, and of course, <laughs> good morning, good evening, good day to you wherever you are. And uh, I will let Laura carry on. Yes, so as I was telling you, we thought of having two different uh, companies and with different uh, customers also, as we know, already know, um, Saga has a, an over uh, customer, mainly uh, UK citizens, and uh, while uh, and smaller luxury cruise ships. While uh, MSC, as we all know, has a, is one of the mainstream uh, with the vessels going up to almost seven thousand uh, passengers uh, plus cruises. So we want to have their opinion, which clearly is going to be completely different. I'm gonna start with uh, MSC. And before we start with the first question, please, I ask the secretary to show a video that um, Elisabetta has shared with us about their protocol. They're calling it the MSC bubble. And here we go. Thank you.
Mi sento talmente sicuro che ho portato qui a bordo anche i miei figli. Tutte le operazioni, sia dall'imbarco che a bordo, che durante le cene, gli spettacoli, sono tutte organizzate molto bene. Non siamo veterani, è la prima è la nostra esperienza sulla nave, ci siamo parecchio divertiti. La trovo più sicura di un'altra qualsiasi vacanza, secondo me. Divertimento, relax, tutto ciò che uno si aspetta dalla crociera è stato rispettato in pieno. It's vital that everybody follows the protocols. Everyone is very safe. We have the COVID test before you embark. We also have temperature checks when we go into the restaurants or the buffets. So safety for everybody is paramount. Thank you. So, Elisabetta, Luca, uh, we've seen a lot of improvements, a lot of the changes. Uh, can you describe it a little bit to, to our members? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, um, Laura. Actually, as you saw from the video, we try to cover as much as possible the entire customer journey. Actually, our protocol starts from the beginning, from the discovery phase. So actually, from all the, for all the information that are present on our website, until all the preparatory information that are required for our guests to embark our ship. Of course, uh, we figure out about the very key points that are very sensible in terms of new protocol about the embarkation and uh, all the life on board. We want to preserve uh, the experience, uh, the wonderful experience of uh, a cruise ship. And so we try to adapt all the processes on board in order to guarantee the highest standard of safety and health. Uh, what, what we did uh, and actually summarized by the video that hopefully will prevent some questions from our, from our friends, we identified the same, same area of improvements, okay? Uh, actually, we want to say that the cruise ship in terms of health and safety was uh, as already high standard, uh, but we try to improve uh, as much as possible. And of course, uh, everything has been done uh, with the supports and in fully uh, partnership with the health authorities uh, at the European level, at the national level, but even at the local level. So there is a huge work in order to engage all the relevant authorities in order to get approval and to find the best solution uh, for, uh, for it. For, for a safe resumption of the cruise line. What I want to say is that our, our protocol is uh, it's flexible. It's, uh, it's open for adaptation and fine tuning and for improving according to the epidemiological situation in the ports that we are visiting. So actually it's something that it's uh, in continuous evolution and we can adapt even according to the best in class testing possibility or whatever is in place in a particular moment. So it's not something that we wrote in the, uh, in the stone uh, six months ago or last uh, July, August, but it's something that we are evolving actually every day. So we have a continuous improvement, we have evolution and the meetings with our top management, with our medical experts. Actually, we had the blue ribbon, so we had a very important professor of epidemiology or experts in the fields of health and safety, and they are contributing with the up-to-date technology or processes that are in place. 
Okay, now, um, okay, we, we, we can uh, um, summarize, I mean, in a slide, I don't know if we are able to project it once. Yes, please, thank you, Anya. So it will be helpful, thank you very much. Actually, this slide will uh, summarize the nine key pillars. Actually, uh, the, those nine key pillars, uh, it's just a way to identify the process that we have uh, analyzed them and improved a lot. So the first one is the universal health screening of COVID-19 for guests. What does it mean? We have a huge protocol in order to prevent any potential case on board, but even to preserve the local communities. Okay, so that means that we are requiring. Uh, we have a, a complete protocol that starts from when people leave their home, because in some cases, according to the epidemiological situation, we are monitoring which is the status, and so we could require to have a COVID test, so a negative COVID test, before that the customer will leave home. Okay, because we want to be sure that they will not travel if they are potentially positive. On top of that, so there is a constant monitoring according to the European guidelines of the situation. And so dynamically, we can uh, address which area of Europe are at risk area. And so we can ask for this additional test. On top of that, every guest embarking our ship will be tested during the embarkation, so in the terminal from uh, authorized medical personnel. Uh, it will be tested with a swab test. So it will be an antigen swab test for the COVID-19 detection, but it will receive all, also an health assessment. So it's not just a test, but they will have to fulfill health questionnaires. Uh, they have to declare something if they were in contact with a potential COVID case in the last 14 days, if they are uh, experiencing symptoms that are COVID related or whatever. So a, 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 an official medical personnel is able to do this kind of uh, uh, evaluation. And if everything is in positive in terms of health screening and negative in terms of COVID test results, they are, they are allowed to embark. This is the first, uh, uh, of course, this is uh, on top of uh, standard uh, measures that we can see in every place. So temperature checks, uh, uh, the, and, and I can confirm that uh, we are very rigid about this part. So even if the guests are not uh, uh, able to provide the proof of negative test because they come from a risk area or whatever, the boarding will be denied. Okay, so there will be no option. Uh, Luca, can I ask you something? I read responsible social distancing. Uh, so what about the capacity? How is this, uh, you or Elisabetta, how is this, uh, the capacity has been affected by applying the protocol? Consider that uh, our ship uh, um, are, are, let's say, big enough to guarantee a, a, a possible uh, uh, social distance, at, at least once required by, by the health authorities. On average, consider that our ship at full capacity can guarantee more than 10 square meters per passengers in the public area. Then we can consider the, out, the, out, uh, um, the outside area and so on. But anyway, according to that, we were also more rigid because I repeat, we want to test and to be sure that everything is working fine. So we are also naturally reducing the capacity uh, of our ships in terms of passengers. And uh, so, I mean, we can guarantee uh, even more than 10 square meters per, per, per passengers. Uh, consider that uh, we have also to guarantee that all the national regulation will be respected. So actually we have to find a trade-off according to all the ports and countries that we, are, we will call. And then of course we have to find the best approach and the fine tuning for, for, for that cruise. The, the, the second pillar is the universal screening for COVID for crew. So basically we are not testing only guests on board. And when we are talking about universal health screening, consider that the current protocol, so I mean the current situation, for even a mid cruise test for our guests. So basically after three, four days of cruise, we are testing again all the guests just to be sure that everything will be preserved. And we are, uh, can guarantee the highest standard of uh, reliability and, uh, and safety. The crew, the same, the crew will be tested several times the crew will be tested with a PCR test before that they, will, they leave home. They will travel. They will have a further test uh, at the marcation. They will undergo 14 days of quarantine on board. And then they will be further testing before that they can start the service. 
And then after that, they will receive a weekly test in order to guarantee and to have a proper monitoring about that. So uh, this is a, a very strict protocol, but with, will, will allow us to prevent that even the crew member can travel across the world uh, uh, in a non-safe way. Uh, as you can imagine, then there is a sanitation and mask, the highest standard already guaranteed. There will be the actually hospital grade uh, sanitation on board. There will be a lot of points uh, that we have identified the, in the cabin that can be touched. And so there will be sanitized more than, uh, more than one time every day. There will be the, the, the local areas, the, the, the public areas. Uh, even in that case, we increase the sanitation on board. And the mask, of course, is mandatory in uh, inside the crew in all the all the public areas uh, for for guests and crew. Uh, consider that uh, when we talk, uh, I want to okay, one hundred percent fresh air. Uh, we're to, we're talking basically uh, the improve. Excuse, excuse me. We recommend to keep your microphones shut <laughs> during the session, please, especially to Italians. 100% <laughs> fresh air. So basically, we improve the ventilation according to the indication of the European uh, health authorities. Uh, so basically, uh, there will be no recirculation and always fresh air on board. This is in all the public area and, and so on. And then, of course, in the hospital area, so in the medical area, we increase even with the, the installation of advanced filters for the ventilation. So just to guarantee an hospital grade level of, uh, of, uh, of safety. Uh, coming back to, uh, then there is, of course, a link to the response, responsible social distance. There is uh, the isolation facilities with the tracking trees. Okay, what does it mean? When we talk about the reduction of capacity on board, uh, mainly it's even due because of uh, a part of the ship has been reserved in terms of cabin uh, to, the to the handling of potential or suspect cases on board, so that we'll be able to identify and to isolate in case. So that's mean that we have at this moment more than 200 cabins, uh, hopefully never used, but in any case, in order to guarantee that the potential case on board can be isolated uh, and even the close contacts, just to be sure that everything will be handled. Of course, how we can do that? We implemented the protocol in terms of contact tracing, so we'll be able with uh, a good details in a very short time to identify potential close contacts. Uh, and uh, uh, this is done uh, with the, the wristband that you saw even on the video. So actually this wristband is provided to all the people on board of the ship uh, and it will uh, give us the chance uh, to identify if required, which are the close contacts of the potential case. Also in this case, the close contacts has been identified as a, a person that stay in, uh, in, in close contact for a period of 15 minutes in a range of one meters and half, but uh, we are so we are able scientifically and technically to identify exactly all the people that are under those conditions, and uh, and we are able to also change this kind of uh, definition uh, in a more restrictive way. So in some cases, so we are also able to uh, identify as close contacts, uh, people that uh, have a contact for 10 minutes. So it, we are even more restrictive of what the authorities are requiring. Then considering everyone is uh, wearing mask on board, of course, the possibility is very, is very reduced. Um, then- uh, the, the, you, you wanna add something more or? I think um, if I may, Luca, sorry to interrupt you, but um, we'll, we'll come back in a minute. We'll come back to Elisabetta as well. Um, thank you for that. That's very, very helpful. One of the reasons we wanted to learn more about these things after the last morning coffee was because there were so many questions uh, from ports and other organizations thank to you. know how the future is going to be. But we'll come back to you with some more questions about that um, in a minute. I'd like to say good morning uh, to James in the UK. James, good morning. Uh, great to see you and, and, and welcome. Um, and I hope you're well. Uh, we also want to hear, please, about um, a company that's slightly different to MSC uh, and uh, how you're going to go forward uh, with your great new ships as well that you, you've taken in, in the last couple of years and, and what's, uh, what are th things looking like in terms of your health protocols for the future, please. Morning. So, sorry, I apologise in advance. My puppy keeps barking, so it's... <laughs> 
hopefully I won't interrupt. Um, no, great presentation there. And I think what it shows is that every cruise line is generally aligned. You know, we all have the same sort of protocols and measures either in practice and being demonstrated successfully, which is really positive, or ready to go out there um, and demonstrate to governments that we are ready to cruise. I think um, one key thing for us when we looked, well, we suspended operations in March, almost a year, which is quite sobering. Um, I've been working in this room for a year now, and not allowed in an office at the moment, still in the UK. But what we did was we assessed our door-to-door -door journey of our customers. And one thing that really came to light is that our operating model and our new ships were quite well suited for operating in a COVID environment because um, we have direct control from the door to the door of our passengers. So we have a chauffeur service. Um, our passengers are our, they're all over 50. So, that, you know, they're a vulnerable group. So we need to protect them. Um, and then the, the ships are brand new, essentially. So their safe return to port capability really helped us when we thought about cabins, isolation zones the air conditioning on board, like MSC, 100% fresh air on our ships. Um, what we've done is we've developed a dedicated isolation zone. So the whole aft section of the ship uh, is isolation. So that's over 112 berths. Uh, you mentioned capacity earlier, so we've reduced to 800. Um, I did the stats a long time ago, but for our passenger, they have a double decker bus of space per passenger when you think about gross tonnage. And it's the same size as a squash court in terms of um, floor space. You know, we're trying to keep visuals for passengers. Um, I think I haven't got any slides, but what I can say is what we did was create a project called DIPCO. So that looked at kind of the key principles. So the first one was design. So the design of the ships, um, you know, brand new, that helped us a lot. Cabin design. So every cabin has its own independent air conditioning, air handling unit. So there's no cost contamination there. That was a real positive. Um, the next thing was innovation. So it is still a holiday. We have to give people a great experience, but we had to innovate. And, you know, how can they have a great dining experience? How can we have a great shore excursion experience? So we looked at that. Then prevention. So testing is key at the moment. Um, we've gone for mandatory vaccinations for passengers because we're able to. In the UK, the, the vaccination schedule is good for us. So that's, you know, that's why we've done that. Um, but we are still looking at testing. You know, antigen at the terminal is uh, probably the quickest way of doing it at this moment. Uh, we're also doing PCR testing at home of passengers so before they travel. So that way we know they're clear when they get to the port and we'll keep testing them again. Um, then we have control. So all the control measures on board, which you know, you've know you just seen a video, it's very similar. And then the, the key thing is operating to that standard and continual improvement in a way. So making sure that everything is fluid, we keep updating our procedures, we learn, we learn from every cruise line out there as well. So well, I think that's probably a good we, start. Yeah, one of the things we actually want to talk about in a little while is actually that standardization and see how the, you know, the industry is approaching this. So I'll, um, I'll let Laura go back now maybe to Elisabetta and uh, ask another, another angle. Yes, because uh, I, I, I'd like to know from Elisabetta and from uh, even if you, James, want to, want to come back uh, to the question, uh, we were all expecting um, a common policy at some point, I mean, clearly not in, uh, in, in last May or 2020, but at some point we were expecting to have a, a common policy from the European Union or from the uh, World Health, or Health Organization to have a common protocol. Uh, why do you think this is not possible? Is it because the situation in the countries are different, the government are giving different uh, uh, inputs? So why do you think we can, or if you can, if, we, if you think that in the future, Future, we might have one. So, um, Lara, let me let me go deeper into this discussion regarding what is the shore side and the countries, the, the governmental part, and what is the cruise line. So, from an industry perspective, there's no right or wrong. We're all right, actually, <laughs> not because I represent a cruise line, but because, as you can see, we have all the pillars of our protocols very, very similar. Then, of course, different size of ships and different demographics can be. Uh, sourced uh, and, and filtered at the port of embarkation in different ways, but we all, all will have to respect the local regulations of the countries that we visit. And here we come to the governmental part, uh, whereas uh, should you talk about uh, travel restrictions, the testing needed to travel to a country, for example, from Americas, which is now very interesting, maybe for us or Saga, but for many others, yes, into Europe, 
or uh, should you talk about the load factor on the buses? There can't be a European um, single policy because there's the different situations in different countries and even within the same country, say for example, Spain, France, or even Italy, different regions have a different situation with the COVID numbers. So um, different regions in Italy have also different availability of, uh, of vaccinations in different countries as well. So we, we all have to monitor the ports, the cruise lines, and of course the health authorities um, we need to look at uh, a possible harmonization of protocols that what we want to leave today as a message to the members of MedCruise, which are our friends and business partners um, in, in our cruise activities. The message we want to leave is um, we, we need to harmonize our protocols. Um, we're all striving from a cruise line perspective it, with incredible, incredible, believe me, efforts. Uh, and, and, and costs, of course, on our shoulders to, to implement a protocol on board and assure these, these operations with reduced capacity, of course, do not allow any great margin to operate, actually none of them. So we need to make sure that together we work, we engage the health authorities of the single regions and the single countries, so the local ones, and, and uh, we harmonize our protocols, Laura. There's can't be there is a big framework as there is in European healthy gateways uh, as there is in, in in UK now after Brexit but we need to work then locally. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, um, Nikki. You want to go home? Uh, yeah, James. I mean, what's what's your view on this on on standardisation of uh, of protocols oh. and the challenges that uh, that the, you know, the different ports are facing and different governments are facing, etc. Yeah, it's um, it's a really good question because there there is standardisation in my view. There is a standardised set of principles that we're all adhering to, but every government, every public health authority has their own take on that slightly. Every cruise line has very different ships, very different operations, but we are all working to those basic principles, which is we're all trying to protect like protect the passengers, the crew, and the communities we visit. That's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it, it's all about sanitation, testing and social distancing if you break it down into that so eventually we might end up with a standardized set or framework across the globe um clear will have a big role in that as well you know and we you know we do have clear procedures we have eu healthy gateways we have emsa we have the uk framework there is the italian standards and as a cruise operator it's very very difficult now for us to gap analyze every that's single cruise cool. protocols and that's what we're trying to do and then you look at the us cdc and, and we cancelled cruises to the US this year. Do you think, James, or even Elisabetta, do you think that port authorities, governments are doing all they can to, you know, to work together with the cruise companies? And I'm asking you because, you know, on our side, most of our port members are ports uh, again. And so uh, just I'm not asking you because you, I want you to say, yes, of course, they're doing, but because this is something that we have to work on. So if you think there is something more that the port authorities or the local governments or the, even the, you know, the national governments can do to work together for a future common protocol, what do you think, what's your thoughts about that? First of all, let me congratulate the ports that we worked so far with because they did an incredible job. We have today some of the ports that uh, MSC Grandiosa is calling and even MSC Magnifica called when uh, she restarted and then had to stop due to the lockdown in Greece. But with all of them, we had a great cooperation. And since day one, we had around the same table, the health authorities, the mayors, the board of tourism, and that's really the local action and initiatives we need to have. We wouldn't dislike, of course, a, a, and it would also save us a lot of efforts if we could have a more macro regional approach. But again, it depends a lot on the local heads and pol political changes that you also have in some of the countries and regions and also in port authorities. So you, you always need to understand that one thing is the intention that everybody has at the governmental and cruise industry level to harmonize and have one single view. And the other thing is the politics behind it. And of course, the mediatic um, view from their local communities. But I agree with James. I don't see it too diff different. It's only in details. And now it stays to discuss this harmonization of protocols. But I want to say that Mediterranean ports, because today we're with MedCruise, are doing a great job. Some countries didn't start certain dialogues in certain details because their governments 
cannot allow this yet because they didn't open to cruising yet. But remember always, it takes two months to have a ship ready to sail um, with all the process that both Saga and MSC and all the other cruise lines have in place with the testing of crew, et cetera. So let's start this dialogue right on time, well long before we think cruising can restart in your port. Thank you, Elisabetta. That's really helpful um, because, uh, and it's good to hear that, that you know, you're happy with, with our port members, certainly in our regions, doing, doing their jobs. I know we're all, we're all working very hard to make sure that we have protocols in place if you can cruise to the, to the countries already, the ports, or we're all ready for when we can open the doors and, and, and welcome you to other ports as well. Um, one other question I have, James, perhaps you might um, uh, be able, or, or Luca, who's done a lot of work as well on this, um, uh, perhaps give us a view of, there are of course different vaccinations and we hear a lot about the effectiveness of different vaccinations. Is that something that you need to, to take into consideration as well? Yeah, I, I can start with this one because obviously we've set the policy for passengers to be vaccinated. Um, you know, our, our view is, positive that vaccines will be another risk mitigation level. Um, we are still waiting for more data like everyone else on the effect of vaccinations on um, on spreading, essentially, in a simple word. Um, what we are doing, so we have separate different levels of our COVID measures and protocols. So if we started last year, which we were trying to with our government, we had the high alert level where vaccinations didn't even exist. Uh, and now we are going down to what does amber look like? What does green look like? Um, what is the new normal which is green and we're just assessing at the moment what kind of levels they are um, I think all cruise lines would aspire to vaccinate their crew or have vaccinated crew that takes time to get the crew through that process because um, obviously it's about protecting the communities that we go to the passengers and crew uh, so we see vaccinations as a great risk mitigation measure um, but we still see that there'll be additional protocols in place in the short to midterm. Okay, Luca, Elisabetta, anything you wish to add about vaccinations? No, basically, we agree. Actually, as we mentioned before, flexibility of the protocol is the key. Of course, the vaccination is an important part that will boost the, the return to the normality or this new normal. But of course, it will be analyzed in a, in a proper way according to the availability, of course. Yeah, I have to say that when we were thinking about uh, uh, this uh, this morning coffee, I asked uh, Anya if, or Sarah if you can please show the FAQ of uh, of the Saga Med of, uh, website because uh, we really thought what can we um, ask more, and I have to say that your website is so so detailed about the you know all the possibility that. Uh, uh, can have been place for your customers. So um, if you go through, I'm, I'm telling my colleagues, if you go, if you go through uh, their website, it's really, really detailed about what's gonna happen if I have my first dose, if the, the second dose is coming uh, two, three days before. It was in, an incredible um, detailed uh, situation. But of course, again, as we said at the beginning, uh, situation in, uh, in the UK is uh, completely different from uh, the one we're having uh, in the rest of Europe. And uh, as Italians, uh, I have to say that we are far, far, far behind uh, your point of vaccination, because I think the latest uh, percentage go up to uh, 3%, but we're talking only about uh, people over 80 or 80 and over, and uh, now they're, they're um, vaccinating um, health um, people that work as health workers. So of course, again, it's a, it's a different view and it's very interesting uh, to know about that. And a uh, last question maybe that, I don't know the time, I'm, 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 I'm can't, I can't see the time yet. Okay, you're okay. don't worry. Yeah, yeah. A last question I would like to ask uh, both um, and uh, whoever wants to answer first is um, something that again came out from the discussion that we had in the first, uh, morning coffee because we found very interesting um, what um, uh, Steven Swear from uh, Valletta Cruise Port was uh, telling us about their operation last, last summer. And um, the question is, how do you think you can manage or how you are expecting to manage the expectation, sorry uh, for the uh, clicking, um, uh, from, from the people in the destination? I mean, 
uh, normally in these days uh, we uh, see people are really scared to have uh, lots of people at the same time uh, going through the through the city and so are you thinking of something you know to uh, assure um, the destination that you know your bubble for instance uh, msc uh, your bubble is working also on the shorex how is it going to be let's you know let me let me tell you this we did with malta authorities and with the media locally a great job to manage expectation and opinion public opinion as you know malta was one of those uh, ports and destinations that blocked the cruise activity at a certain point uh, when at the very beginning there were cases declared, cases increasing in the world, and nobody had the knowledge that we have today. A long, a long road has been, a long path has been walked through in the meantime. Uh, but what we decided to do with them was anyway to have the tour operators speaking to the media, the local radios, exactly, to, to talk through the, the protocol that was set in place, meaning with staggered departures, the, 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 the tourists completely reorganized in a COVID manner, meaning uh, different groups, smaller groups, considered a Malta went down to a maximum of 10 people per bus, which we don't want to see in your ports, but if needed, of course, we will have to readapt to that uh, when the high numbers were high, going high. Uh, we measured the temperature to everybody before and after. We have even, there's no free time, as Lucas said, during the tours, and, and we, this all this was said, was told at the radio and the media. The same Stephen Threadrip as C CEO of Valencia Cruise Port and CEO of Global Port Holding did at the radio and media. Malta is a smaller destination, but you can do the same in your regional and local radios and media to manage expectation. Having some interviews to the staff of the port, you feel confident in working in the terminals. Consider that MSC is also testing all the drivers and the guides in phase one of this restart, as well as the ground operators meet and greet in the embarkation ports. And, and the, uh, some of the friends you have today at this table are, are going through that every, every week with Grandiosa. So manage expectation and having communication going out with local communities is fundamental. I'm not sure if James um, has any started anything with uh, CLIA UK and Ireland, for example, of the UK Chamber of Shipping. Yeah, I think, um, th thanks. I think it's key that people demonstrate that cruising is safe and is working well and obviously we can cite what MSC and other lines are doing very successfully and then it becomes the new normal you know people get used to cruising again and they'll just forget about that we, we're reaching out I think why I was really pleased to do this today is that we've got great cruise networks we've got great people that can really get down to the communities all their contacts and sell this message because cruise lines can't do that on their own it's all of us in this together. Um, I've got something with Cruise Scotland tomorrow, very similar, because we need to start building all those uh, relationships up again. And it, it's key, you know, protect the passengers, crew, communities. That's all we want to do and give people a good holiday. It is, it is a very, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I not only represent the port, but as you know, I represent the Gibraltar Tourist Board and, and as, and as a, a, a tourism, you know, organisation, uh, I can tell you that, the, you know, the, the, the concern uh, among people that live in our ports and our destinations uh, for the return of cruising is very, very high because obviously, unfortunately, uh, it received a lot of, a lot of coverage uh, at the beginning of all when all this happened. Okay, we've got about uh, just over 15 minutes left. And before we go to questions, if I could ask you, each one of you, um, I'll come to Luca first, just to just to summarize, you know, what what um, what you would like, uh, for example, from us uh, as, as an association of ports and uh, and members as well, you know, going forward, what's, uh, you know, is, is there anything we're not doing yet you'd like us to do? And what's your message going forward uh, to the return, hopefully, uh, of, of the cruise industry? Luca, maybe you want to go first? Yes, of course, uh, what we need, it's a full collaboration of all the parts and actors involved in the resumption of the cruise. So actually, there is a huge support. It's a, it's, we are working as a team, really, as a team in order to engage and to provide the right message to the local authorities, uh, but uh, at every level, so national level, but even at the European time. So everyone now, this is a, I mean, a common project. So we need, of course, to have a full uh, cooperation. Uh, we are open to provide all the details uh, that are required to every one of your members, uh, and so that we can have this uh, jointly approach in order to demonstrate that uh, the cruise are, is, are safe, actually. Grazie, Luca. Elisabetta, your, your message going forward? 
Yeah, the only thing I would suggest to the different regions that didn't start yet in the MED is do not wait the health authorities to finally say, okay, from today you can start because it takes long to plan and give the right comfort on the protocol. So let's start the dialogues with your regional local uh, city authorities as soon as possible. Of course, at niche national level, there's a higher level of discussions and the cruise industry is having this dialogues as a whole with, through CLIA to have a common approach. But at local level, don't wait for them to be ready. Let's start the dialogue so that when they switch on the, you know, the, the, the switch, we can, we can start and be ready by then. That's very useful advice. Thank you, Elisabetta. James, your message going forward? Yeah, I think one thing we crave is certainty. So anything we can do to get more certainty, more information now will help us when cruise does restart, particularly in the areas where, where we can't cruise at the moment. Um, we've all got a hunger for that. And there's a pent up demand to come. We want to come, but if you can give us a clue of your discussions, some detail of what you've been having with health authorities, or if you haven't, you know, it'd be great if you start having those discussions about cruise restart this summer. Wonderful. Okay, so Laura, I think we'll go to questions now. So if there's anybody who would like uh, to ask a question, I see, as I said I before, see an you hand raising from or, Rebecca. Yeah, or use the chat function. You've obviously done an excellent job, guys, this morning. It's uh, covered everything really professionally. So, uh, any questions from the Med Cruise family? I saw Rebecca. You were raising your hands. Go ahead. Greetings to everybody from Zadar, Croatia. Um, I hope you all heard the good news that as of today, uh, Zadar and Croatia in general are open again for the restart of cruise industry. I'm very, very happy. We have already communicated to certain uh, cruise lines we are working closely with. So now we are fine tuning our health protocols and so on. We are working based on MSC um, the manual that you have provided us with. So we are working in that direction. We would like to be extension of your protocols together uh, with the local um, local authorities and local measures. However, we obviously have cruise lines we are which are very eager to restart the, the industry. We have ports which are very eager to start as well. What about the passengers? Um, also, you know, what is the demand currently? Um, and also we know that it takes between two and four months for the cruise cruise line to get the passengers on board and to restart the ships. Um, my second question is, um, we were talking about the certain regions in the countries, you know, going from green to yellow to orange and all these colors that we have. What happens in a moment, for example, you have the guests booked for a particular cruise and these, thing, these regions that change their status very, very quickly as we have seen in the past. What happens, you have a guest which is booked for a cruise which is in a month from now. In the meanwhile, the region goes from the green to, to yellow, to orange or to red zone and so on. What happens that in that in, in that moment? So I'll try to keep it very, very quick because we want to give more time to everybody to ask questions. So the first question is related to, to the demand from the cruisers. There's a high, high demand. People want to go back to cruising. That's the really the, the, the gasoline for our enthusiasm uh, to, to, move, to move even faster in this and we start with more ships. Uh, of course, in phase one protocol with reduced capacity. Uh, and I can, we can tell you without revealing any confidential information that there are some European markets which ha are booking at, 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 a, at a full speed now in booking. So that is really reassuring, not only for winter 21, 22, but for the summer. Uh, if a guest is booked, to answer to your second question, for next month and the cruise cannot be suddenly, cannot be performed, of course, we have, we had we have put in, uh, in place a system with voucher, refunds, cancellation, reprotections, because uh, the, the guests understand what's happening. They know they book at their own risk at the moment because they know our cruising depends on local governmental regulations and with the development of the pandemic. And we haven't had any complaint or any lawsuit to manage so far because they all understand what it is. But certainly there's a system in place with all the insurance, cancellation and reprotections. Thank you, Elisabetta. I have a question from a colleague whose uh, microphone doesn't work, and she's asking me, and I, I, I turn the question to both of you, um, if you if you think that it would be impossible uh, to have uh, um, in different cities, of course, 
areas of the city which are COVID-free certified with the special protocols uh, in order to let the passengers uh, uh, let's say go and spend some money in the local um, in the local shops and of course this will also make the cruise um, the cruise uh, felt as a, you know more welcome if they can spend some money on the territory what do you think about that uh, I would like to answer because we're the only one that really so far had a, such a strict protocol about it and uh, and Please, first of all, remember, this is only a phase one of the restart. We really, really hope to loosen measures as soon as we can, uh, because this will make the local communities happier. But at the moment, we can't really afford to bring back to the ship anyone that threatens uh, the, the, the bubble system, uh, guests and crew on board, uh, who are actually the great support and pillar of all this operation, our crew members as well as the drivers, the guides and everyone else. So we understand it's critical now to talk to Chamber of Commerce and, and have the associations of the, of the shops and the restaurants who complain about it. But this is only phase one. You need to communicate very clearly. We will operate as an elastic. Flexibility, as Luca said, is key in this protocol, also from the local communities. But I think it gives a good uh, example when we say that so far, uh, we had three cases in months of cruising with MSC where we carried 50,000 guests so far with no accidents. And full, um, we only had three cases of people who broke the protocol during a tour and they just sneaked out and went somewhere else. When they were back to the ship, they found their luggage on the pier and we didn't accept them back on board. And this was actually appreciated by the media and by the guests on board. Wow. That. So we need to set the example, but this is only phase one, Lara. We don't yes, have forever. I, I agree with you. James, what do you think about the special COVID-free sections in the cities? It's very similar to Elizabeth. You know, we, we have controlled excursions. That's what they're called. That's phase one. That's that's the highest level. Um, and crew shore leave um, is not allowed for crew to go off to the local shops, the fast food place. That can't happen yet. What we do want is a safe place for crew to go ashore, be it in the terminal, so they can have calls home to their family or um, a park or something like that nearby. But, but right now we're at the point where it's got to be a controlled um, excursion to protect, again, the passengers, crew, and the communities that we visit. Okay, anybody else out there, any more questions? I can't see anything on the chat. Uh, don't know if anybody can see any, anybody else waving. Aris is raising his hand. Aris, yeah. Okay, yes, ma'am. I have a question to both of the cruise lines. Many ports are operating, operating their uh, terminals with more uh, than one ship at the same time. And I would like to ask you what your intention is. Are you going to share this uh, terminal with another cruise line or not? Well, in, in phase one, we had communicated to ports in 2020 was preferable to avoid clashing days. Uh, clashing days are no more um, avoidable at a certain point, especially if you consider brands like Costa or MSC who have a very similar kind of product and by the way with whom we did uh, an industry effort to, 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 to come to the current protocol with the Italian government for example and, uh, and we can of course share especially if the space allows if the terminal and the local authorities have the comfort to do that everything can be done in total safety yes okay thank you yeah and look from our side you know um, for a turnaround operation um, exclusive use of the terminal absolutely um, we control our passengers journey from door to door and I think initially again we're at that level where when we do start we, we don't want passengers interacting between two, two different cruise lines we need to have a nice clean safe secure route for our guests and crew excellent okay um, I don't think there are any more questions and I can't see anything so perhaps we'll start to wrap up one thing if I could ask you please before you will go if as many of you would be as kind as uh, as you can to switch on your cameras as we tend to take a group photograph before we wrap it up um, I'll let uh, the secretariat lead on this but if you can also please now as many of you want to uh, in, in case some of you are not in your pajamas or other things um, please switch on your <laughs> you look good <laughs> Please switch on your cameras and uh, Anya, are you going to lead on this? Yes, let's okay. do it. One, two, three. Second page. 
And one, two, three, smile. There you go. Thank you, Anya. Welcome. Great. So big, big thank you to Luca, to Elisabetta and to James. Thank you to everybody. Grazie. Merci. Gracias. Obrigado. Efaristopoli. Uh, to all of you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and do join Laura and myself for the next one. Uh, and it will be coming soon. So happy cruising, everybody, and keep safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Elisabetta. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, George. Thanks a lot for joining. Bye, guys. Bye bye. 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 Thank bye. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.